Aquarius, thanks for joining me. This is your horoscope for August 2016. You start the month with a grand trine in water and this connects your intuitive ability when it comes to your career and your day-to-day -day routine and how you can improve your career. So immediately on the 1st of August, you may get some intuitive messages which help you to realize your hopes and dreams when it comes to your work. That includes figuring out whether you're happy in your job, whether this is all you can achieve, whether this is it, or whether there are things which are outstanding which you could look at to make things better. It's really a kind of gut feeling and an understanding that things either can and should change or whether you've reached the pinnacle of your career success. Okay? Same thing if you're retired, you know, if you're retired and working on something, you'll get the sense of, okay, this really, there's still a lot in this. I can really explore this and really create something great. Or this is the end of it. I've achieved what I'm meant to achieve. On the second, the new moon occurs at 8.46 in the evening based on Greenwich Mean Time. And it pulls Leo energy into your seventh house. That fills your relationship sector with real fire. Okay, So you're the sign of the zodiac that really benefits the most when it comes to relationships. Romantic relationships because Venus is in Leo in your seventh house. And you really now start a 28th month not 28 months, 28 day to a monthly cycle of fire and passion when it comes to relationships and romance and your connection with other people. So even before I look at anything else, you're going to have an amazing month when it comes to romantic relationships. Whether you're single or you're already in one, you can really bring the heat to the relationship side of things. On the 3rd of August, Mars goes into Sagittarius and that's in your 11th house. So Mars is the... Um, part of the chart that represents drive and desire and what you want and what you won't compromise on and what's yours. In Sagittarius, it's about moving forward. And in this sector it's in, it's about I am ready to achieve my hopes and dreams, especially when it comes to my relationships, my friendships and anyone else in my life. So you're very focused on people and who adds something to you and who you're excited about and how you can really bring that to a very close, passionate, fulfilling level. On the 4th of August, the Moon starts to conjunct Mercury and Venus in your 7th and 8th house. So what you'll notice is that you're really clear on, you have a great understanding of other people at the moment. And that's why you get on with people so well, but it also gives you the ability to influence people a little bit and to be a leader and to get them motivated and to take them along with you. So that's interesting because if you're a boss, you know, if you're in your working life, you're in charge of other people, you're really going to be in, in a place where you can get people motivated and get them to, to support your cause. So if you're, uh, if you're doing a fundraiser or if you're trying to, you know, get interest going in a certain cause, you're really the person to do it here at the beginning of August. On the 5th of August, Mars starts to conjunct Saturn and that's really important because these two planets form this conjunction, this relationship until the 7th of September. So I've already said that Mars is about power and drive and what you want. Saturn is scrutiny and structure and restriction and unshakable truth. And when these things come together mean that your main priority, your main focus is your relationships and really getting somewhere with your relationship. So if you've been in a relationship that's not going anywhere, you know, you've been dating for a couple of months and you haven't seen, you haven't made any commitment, that's going to become an intolerable position for you and you will really want to lock things down or to get some meaning. So this is about really adding labels to things so that you can understand them, okay? And you're really trying to progress and create some structure in your personal relationship life. And I think you'll really be able to do that because you've got so much fire and passion and energy to put into this that you can really create a community around you. So this is a good time to start a new business, especially if it's based on um, other people being involved. If you're working in, uh, in human resources or in people recruitment or something, you're gonna be a force to be reckoned with, but really, Everything that you're about is lighting the fire in other people. So 
Again, if you have some sort of message to put out there, you will never be able to present it as well as you will present it this month. Everything is really me in the public and really setting people alight with my enthusiasm, with charm and with energy. On the 6th of August, Venus goes into Virgo. Venus is the planet of love and beauty and when she's in Virgo, she's at her most dry and um, serious and analytical. And that's the 8th house. So the 8th house is institutions and other people. And with all of this passion that you've got going on independently, you could really be very subversive and you could really bring down an institution. Because what you can do is you can really disseminate and analyze an institution that operates on certain principles. You have the eagle eye critical vision to do that. You have the communicative ability to make sense of what you're thinking. You have the good luck factor and the ability to really put that into some sort of practical format and then the passion to take it to other people. So if you, I mean, not to, you know, get you going, but if you're like an activist or something and you have a real desire for justice when it comes to, I don't know, if they're building a nuclear power plant near your house and you really want the community to stand up against that and to for them to recognize what's wrong with that, you're the one who can educate them and who can actually motivate them to make change. So you're the social justice figure here. You're the person who can affect great change in August. On the 7th and 8th, the moon goes into Libra and it um, connects with Pluto in your 12th house. So spiritually, what you're feeling is you want to work for change. I'm going to write that down for you because that's really the key thing about you in August. So you're working for change and you feel very comfortable being around other people and being in the public sphere. You're very comfortable with people looking at you. So, I mean, not everyone's an activist. I'm just thinking how you could use this for your benefit if you're a, a, just a normal person. Um, if you're promoting something, if you work for a company and they ask for a volunteer to do the public side of things, if you work in PR, all of those things, you're going to have great influence. On the 9th and 10th of August, the moon now goes into Scorpio and it conjuncts Black Moon Lilith in your 10th house of Korea. So what you'll notice is that, again, you're very critical and you're very aware of the things that don't work and the things that irritate you in your working life, especially when you're working for an employee, and you will look at that and say, this isn't the way it ought to be, this is the way I want it to be, this is how I want to make my money, and I want to bring this down. I want an end to the injustice, I want things to be transparent, and for people to really recognize that this is not the way to do it. So if you're going after Monsanto, or if you work for Monsanto, or Shell Oil, or one of these you know, global companies that really do a number on the planet, and you've always kept your mouth shut, then you're going to find it very difficult to keep it zipped. Because everything is about um, identifying the thing that is not good and transforming it and changing it into something that does work. So on a global scale, on a big scale, you can do it with Monsanto and those companies I've just mentioned. But also in your personal life, you can apply that to yourself. You know, if you're in friendships with people and you're always gossiping, you know, you're like, oh, you know, look at her and she did this and I heard they were swinging and all this stuff. And you recognize and you realize that what you're doing really isn't nice. I mean, you can apply this to yourself too and that that's not right. You can really uproot that character defect and get rid of it and behave the way you would like to behave around other people. So it's a process of self-development and self-improvement. On the 11th of August and 12th of August, the Moon now joins your um, Mars and Saturn in your 11th house. And what you feel most comfortable with is friendships, being around other people, motivating other people, going on trips with other people, So, yeah, I mean, if, if you have the opportunity to go on a holiday with your friends, if you have um, the potential to study with other people, the more you're around other people, the more you can 
really get to a position of power and shine and be elected as a leader and really affect some great change. So this is not a month for you to sit alone in your room. It's really time to, to connect with others. On the 13th of August, Saturn goes direct. Now Saturn is an outer planet. It stays in retrograde for a long, long time. And um, when it goes direct here, you'll notice particularly that you really stop having anxiety or a sense of restriction or limitation when it comes to your relationship with others. So if you're shy or if you censor yourself, that will really fall away. And from now on, I think at least till the end of the year, you're going to notice that you're far more willing to take risks, personal risks. You're far more likely to make new friends and put yourself in social situations which at other times may have frightened you. So if you're someone you know who is very alone and who doesn't have a great network of friends, go out and do as many things possible as you can this month in August because you can pick up a lot of friends here and really um, get to know people and um, bring a lot more... make your life richer by bringing more people into it. On the 14th, Chiron starts to quincux the sun and um, all of this, this connection with other people gives you an insight and gives you an idea on how to improve financially and how to get your money situation to a better place. On the 15th of August, Mars starts to square Neptune and that's going to be in place until the 4th of September this year. So that's very important. Now, Mars has given you that drive to be around other people. And Neptune is the dream of what can be achieved when you work with other people. So, again, if you're someone who wants to start a business in connection with other people, it's the perfect time to do it. If you're starting to, if you want to plan anything that involves other people, August is the time to do it and you're the time, you're the person to do it. Because you'll connect so well, you'll be massively enthusiastic and you also have the practical capabilities to organize things and to get them started. 16th of August, the moon is now in Capricorn and that begins to square Uranus, which is in your third house. And if you have to make any presentations, if you have to sign any contract, if you have to make changes to your working life and really feel like you commit to something and you have to be certain of something, this is the day to do it uh, because, again, you'll look at things very clearly and be able to get rid of any mistakes and errors and feel very comfortable um, committing to something. On the 17th of August, the moon goes into Aquarius. That's in your first house. So this is a day of real comfort for you. You feel more at ease within yourself. I think all of this hyper, hyper focus on other people and this massive desire to be around other people slows down a little bit actually. And you start to feel a little bit more calm and at peace. But more than that, the moon in, in Aquarius starts to square Black Moon Lilith in your 10th house. So again, things that displease you about your working life or your working situation, will you will feel those within. You know, you'll be very close to this does not fit and I don't like what I'm doing here and I need to change something. So, you know, throughout all of this, remember to be nice to yourself because the standards are very high here, the way I'm talking. You're level of criticism is on 10 and you're really saying that is unacceptable and you're really taking a no tolerance approach to a lot of things so just give yourself a little bit of a break because no one's perfect the full moon happens in aquarius in your sign on the 18th and that's in your first house so that'll be a real i mean even more even more passion even more energy even more a sense of self and confidence coming into your chart and you'll really feel um, good about yourself. That full moon happens at 9.28 in the morning and that's again Greenwich Mean Time. On the 19th and 20th, the moon joins Neptune and the south node and Chiron in your second house. Intuitively, over these two days, you will feel what you can do to improve your physical situation. Money, housing, belongings, Intuitively, you'll be able to amend things that have been difficult or disappointing and you'll take action to realize your hopes and dreams when it comes to your physical stuff. And that will translate itself 
what you can do in connection with other people. So the way for you to make money this month is by joining forces with others to really bring things together. So that can be, again, um, setting up a pop-up shop or something with other people, anything like that, that's a pr project. And I mean, as an Aquarius, you're a bit of a leader anyway. Aquarians, you guys are really good at um, being humanitarians, but, but being a facilitator of information and informing others, okay? And this month, your natural qualities are like on steroids, and you're Aquarius squared. You're really at the peak of your powers. So if there's anything I've missed in terms of specific things about you that you recognize as particularly Aquarian to yourself, recognize that those qualities are exaggerated and even stronger than usual. On the 21st, there's a grand trine in fire in your chart. And this is work improvements, again, as a result of communication via one of your friendships, which you can then take charge of to implement. The sun goes into Virgo on the 22nd and it joins all of the energy in your 8th house. So the, the critical faculties that you've been applying all month, they become even stronger. Um, please be aware that you, know, you may really go after things which are corrupt or which aren't very, you know, like Monsanto, for instance, putting GMO stuff in all these plants and ruining the crops and all of that stuff. But you may also be very intolerant towards other things in your life and you may decide to go after them. The biggest thing that I'm always proud of living, you know, living in the Western world is that most Western people value tolerance and that people may be different and that we allow people the space to live their lives the way they want to live them. Okay. And you're potentially, I mean, you can be a force for good here and also a force for bad because if you go after the things that you don't like, which really have nothing to do with you, so let's say you're an Aquarius and you really hate gay people, okay? And you think, these, these gay clubs, I really think that's horrendous and how dare these people do this, that is against the Bible, that is against Christian values and beliefs and that is not the way I think society should be. I'm going to absolutely go after that then that's not helpful because even though you um, go after gay people, they're not going to change. We're not going to change. It's not something that you choose. So your efforts are misguided. So make sure that your passion and your desire and your leadership is actually something that has a positive outcome. And that's meant to support people who may not, not be able to speak for themselves or to support people rather than tear them down. The moon goes into Taurus on the 23rd and 24th, and that's in your fourth house. So that's the best day for you this month in terms of just connecting with family and having spending time with them, relaxing, just enjoying each other's company. On the 25th, there's a grand cross. And again, it, I think it goes without saying, try and focus on um, how you can make changes to your personal work what you don't like, what you would prefer to do. If you're going to go self-employed or make changes to your existing job role, if you can do that. And again, if you're a pensioner, if you're retired, that applies too. If you're not happy with what you're doing and you want to make changes to that, focus on that, but try and keep things very simple on the 25th because there may be potential for you to get overwhelmed and to um, paralyze yourself because you've got so many things on at the same time. On the 26th and on the 27th, the Sun conjuncts the North Node in Virgo in the 8th house. So you may find that um, you, be, you have some awareness of past life influences which have brought you to the place you're at and why you're so focused on doing the work that you're doing now and why you believe in it so much because it may be an extension of where you've come from in a past life. And either way, the truth is that the things that you're going through here in August, they're very genuine and they're very true to who you are as an individual, as a soul. Okay, You're really engaging with things that are meaningful and truthful to you. So ask yourself the questions, you know, what's going on in my life at the moment? Am I being a, a leader or an activist or 
Am I working very hard to implement a project? And what, what is that about? And what am I trying to achieve with this on a soul level? Where am I trying to get to? Ask yourself those kind of questions. You'll get a lot of information from it on the 26th and 28th. On the, on the 26th and 27th, rather. On the 28th, the moon squares Uranus. And it's a great day for communication. Again, being anything to do with the public, I think you'll feel very comfortable presenting, doing anything involved in the public sphere. The 29th of August sees the moon going into Leo now in your seventh house and squaring Scorpio rising in your 10th house. So ability to now bring everything together and to work very well with people, again, to motivate people, to get people interested in what you're trying to achieve. Venus goes into Libra on the 30th. And I think you, you stop being so critical now and you start focusing on your relationships with other people in a more easy way. On this day, Mercury goes retrograde as well. So I think the, the main target that you've had in your sights throughout August, that falls away now and communication becomes less uh, focused. And it may even be that you have problems communicating in the work setting, especially when it comes to memos and, and emails and stuff like that, there may be miscommunication. So watch out for that. That Mercury retrograde stays in place until the 22nd of September. And then finally, at the end of the month, the moon goes into Virgo and it prepares for the new moon in Virgo, which happens on the 1st of September and the solar eclipse that happens on the 1st. So again, that's another day when you can create great insights into what is your role in the institution you belong to, what is it that you're trying to change, how are you defined in connection with other people, and what is it that you want to do with that, and how do you want to change that. So big questions around identity, um, I hope that's given you some idea of what you'll be working with. If you've got any questions that you'd like me to look at in a personal reading for you, then please get in touch via my website, it's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab and you can order your reading with me there. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. And I also do live tarot readings on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444. Like that page if you'd like um, to take part in that. I hope you have a wonderful August and I'll speak to you soon.